people for fine day of the hour of the 11th day of the life. Today is our opportunity as a school to unite in tribute to all who serve our country. We are proud to have our city mayor, Robert Branson, and members of the Board of Education with us now. Thank you for being here to support what we do. We also have our parents and community members joining us today. We thank you for always being here. Our true guests of honor, though, are the veterans who are with us today, those who third or past her in the long, proud history. Whether our nation is at war or peace, they have stepped to the line. Our veterans have stood strong for the ages, answering the call of duty with courage and sight. From Bunker Hill to Norman, from the jungles of Vietnam to the deserts of the Middle East, these brave men and women have defeated. Defended her. We reflect and remember the sacrifice of the Father, and we honor those who are still.
While other branches serve our country on the land and sea, the Air Force is not held by Earth limitations. The U.S. Air Force is the largest Air Force in the world. Two of the missions of the Air Force are the ability to position forces rapidly anywhere in the world and the ability to engage opposing targets anywhere at any time. Additionally, the Air Force responds to the Iranian crisis problem. The Coast Guard protects U.S. waterways, ports, and shore, as well as acts as a first responder on our coast. The Coast Guard is especially unique because it's not only a military, but also a federal law enforcement agency. The Coast Guard keeps our waterways safe by conducting search and rescue missions, protecting the marine environment, and stopping the smuggling of illegal drugs into the country. It is a faithful protector in time of peace and a valiant defender in time of The Space Force is the newest branch of the military. Established in 2019, previously under the Air Force, U.S. Space Force have participated in every conflict since the Vietnam War, most notably the Persian War, which is offering as the first Space Force. The creation of the U.S. Space Force has its own military branch of the first Space capabilities are fundamental to both and our modern way of life. Therefore, space is vital to U.S. security, cybersecurity, and prosperity. The Space Force employs a global network of space surveillance and systems information. From GPS to military operations and satellite protection, the Space Force defends the ultimate high ground. We honor those who have served in all our branches of our military.
which changed the outcome of the Battle of Perso. Just close to Bashir in the Tunnel Heller Cemetery are the graves of four men who died in the Battle of Centralia. Five other Civil War veterans are also buried there. There are also Civil War veterans buried in the Bashir Cemetery and the St. Mary's Cemetery in Adair. In this conflict that divided the nation, brothers fought against brothers and friends against friends. The war pulled the nation apart and few families were left without us. Sullivan Malou, an officer in the Union Army, wrote this letter to his wife. My very dear sir, the indications are very strong that we shall move in a few days, perhaps tomorrow. Lest I should not be able to write again, I feel impelled to write a few lines. I have no misgivings about or lack of confidence in the cause in which I am engaged. And my courage does not halt nor falter. I know how strongly American civilization now leans on the triumph of the government and how great a debt we owe to those who went before us through the blood and sufferings of the revolution. And I am willing, perfectly willing, to lay down all my joints in this life to help maintain this government and to pay that debt. Sarah, my love for you is deathless. Something whispers to me that I shall return to my loved ones unharmed. If I do not, my dear Sarah, never forget how much I love you, and when my last breath escapes me on the battlefield, it will whisper your name. But, O oh Sarah, if the dead can come back to this earth and flit unseen around those they love, I shall always be near you in the gladdest days and in the darkest nights. Always. And if there be a soft breeze upon your cheek, it shall be my spirit passing by. Sarah, do not mourn me dead. Thank I am gone and wait for thee, for we shall meet again. Less than a week after writing this letter, Baloo was killed at the first battle of Bull Run. A song titled Dance for Love was arranged as an adaptation of the letter written by Baloo to Sarah. The Rashir choir performed this song.
until 1918. During the conflict, the Central Powers made up of Germany, Austria, Hungary, Bulgaria, and the Ottoman Empire fought against the Allied Powers, which were the Great Britain, France, Russia, Italy, Romania, Japan, and the United States. World War I saw unprecedented levels of carnage and destruction. Along with the wars of trench warfare, World War I also saw the life of chemical warfare and poisonous gas. By the time the war was over, the Allied Powers claimed favor. More than 60 million people, soldiers and civilian alike, were dead. The world had never seen a war of this magnitude before, and the conflict was known as the Great War. The war ended with the signing of armistice in 1980.
Buddy Milstead over here enlist with the Air Force in San Francisco, 1941, as an aerial observer. He sailed from San Francisco, July 25th, of President Hula to Manila, Philippines. All on board, his boat was fresh. Arriving in Manila, he was given his choice of a medical discharge or transfer to an air raid warning, a new branch of the Fifth Force of Single War. Buddy chose to continue in the service of his country. On February 6th, following the attack on Pearl Harbor, a letter was received from Buddy saying that they had fine, but to send the planes and guns and they would come out of this war. After the fall of Great War, the last of the U.S. defenses in the Philippines, Buddy was reported missing in action. He was considered MIA two years until May 8, 1990. When the War Department notified his mother, he still found guilty at a time of his actual death after his death. He was known to be dead, and no details or facts of his death. All that is known is that he died in 1942 in the Japanese He would have lived to only 20 points of hope. A Purple Heart, awarded through wounds in service, was bestowed posthumously and sent to his mother. Leroy Van Sickle was raised in the Berlin area where he received his education and graduated from the Berlin. He then enlisted to serve his country in the United States Air Force in 1940. He was assigned to a combat crew in the 459th Bomb Group and 756th Bomb Squadron and served as the nose gunner on a 24 Liberator. Leroy said that when the planes went on a mission, the odds were that one in three would be shot down. On July 28, 1944, his plane was hit over Romania. The crew was ordered to parachute out over Albania. They were captured and turned over to the Germans and sent to Budapest Hong Kong. Leroy was held at the German UW camp of the four in Poland until February 5, 1945. Prisoners were forced to leave the UW camp and march for three months. Leroy was so weak that he couldn't stand up right. He had two friends on either side of him. If he had fallen down, he would have been Leroy was liberated by the English Park on May 2nd, 1945. Leroy had been in prison for nine months. His weight had dropped from 190 pounds to 120 pounds. Leroy returned to North Missouri. He and his wife Mary were south of Berlin, raising registered cattle. He worked as a United States Postal Carrier for 32 years in Berlin. He died in 2009, age 87. Leroy Van Sickle was a cousin of me and one of these. Diesel Platts was born in 1919 in the Reserve. Diesel fought World War II, was the last of the horse cavalry and served in Italy. After the war, he returned to Dare County, where he farmed and was in Rochester. Also from Berkshire, Clarence Howard fought World War II. Mr. Howard was the great grandfather of Maddie Mayfield, the fifth grade. Served as an anti tank proven with Company A of the 899th Angus Shore Battalion and participated in the Rhineland, Central Europe, and Arctic. Mr. Howard attained the rank of Technician 5. He also received the Bronze Star Medal. We honor these local men and all members of the Greatest Generation. This has to 
Tuesday night, all hell broke loose on all sides. I really thought I was wrong quite a few times. When dawn came, there was dead men here. I lost my best day from Detroit that night. Don't worry, because there are plenty of good men dying over here. And if it takes every ounce of our blood, we're going to get our wounded and dead out. The army left 22 truckloads of wounded, and when they ran, you can guess what happened. Most of us left and hardly walked from prison. It is 18 below zero now. I'm going to start moving again. So until we meet again,
What they carried varied by mission. When a mission took them to the mountains, they carried mosquito netting, pins, machetes, and extra weapons. If a mission seemed especially hazardous or could involve a place they knew to be bad, they carried everything they could. In certain heavily mined areas of operation, where the land was dense with coke hoppers and bouts and beddies, they took turns carrying a 28 pound mine with them, with its headphones and big sets in play. The equipment was a stress on the lower back and shoulders. Awkward to handle, often useless because of the trap on the earth, but they carried it in, partly for safety and partly for the illusion of safety. Starnum. Oh. They carried 
please stand and be recognized. Coinciding with the Korean War and the Vietnam War was another conflict known as the Cold War. This struggle pitted the world's two great powers against each other, the democratic capitalist United States and the communist Soviet Union. In 1962, the leaders of the U United States and the Soviet Union engaged in a tense 13-day political and military standoff in October. This tension, called the Cuban Missile Crisis, was initiated when Soviet leader Nikita Khrushchev began to install nuclear armed Soviet, Soviet missiles on Cuba, just 90 miles from the U.S. shores. Disaster was avoided when Khrushchev back down. In 1961, a wall was built in Berlin to separate the city and prevent violence. For decades, travel between East and West of Berlin was restricted. In 1987, President Reagan called Mr. Gorbachev to tear down this wall. In 1989, the wall came down, Orders opened and free elections removed communist regimes in Eastern Europe. In late 1991, the Soviet Union dissolved and the Iron Curtain was lifted. We have veterans with us today who served during the Cold War. They were stationed around the world ready to defend and protect. We thank you for your commitment to keeping democracy safe. For the Cold War veterans in the audience, please stand and be ready. He's the principal. 
Even God must be angry because the casualties have been so low on our side and the Iraqis that have been forced into their armies have surrendered. I am about 20 to 25 miles from the border and it's finally getting toler tolerable here weather-wise. It has been freezing and raining since we've been here. I never thought I'd be cold in Saudi Arabia. We are all very sensitive to going to planes, helicopters, and especially artillery. During the day, things are relatively quiet. At night, we don't really know what's going to happen. We don't worry about Iraqi troops. We're concerned about terrorists. This camp has very little to protect itself in the way of armed or animals. We could fight infantry. We would be defenseless against tanks or artillery. Since we are not mainline troops for combat, we are not considered to free infantry. All of us are tired of war, but all of us are willing to die to get rid of time. Like we always say, someone has to do it. I sincerely appreciate that you've taken the time to remember us over here. At times, we feel so disconnected from reality. But I must tell you that we are all indebted to people like yourself pray right and remember. God bless you. Take care of yourself and give all at church my love and best wishes. Pray for peace and in hearts so that there can be peace in the world. Simplify free. At the peak of the war, over 170,000 troops were stationed in Iraq. More than 32,000 troops were wounded in action. Countless more came home from, with traumatic brain injuries and post-traumatic stress. Over 4,000 American troops lost their lives. For our, for our Iraq veterans with us today, those were your friends and brothers. If there are Iraq war veterans in the audience, please stand directly. In 2019, Andrew Ross was killed when he was conducting combat operations as Special Force Team Leader in Manazi Province, Afghanistan. Prepared a letter to his wife in the event something would happen to him. In his letter, he wrote, You understand my sense of duty. Many men have in the fight for enemy, but I do. I am a man who believes I died for something greater than myself. If you're reading this, it's because I gave all I had for this. My brothers, my family, the most important for you. I love what I do, and I love everything my nation and as a writer, my heart is great. I do not regret. The number of US troops significantly declined as Afghan forces took more responsibility for combat operations. Yet Several thousand American servicemen remain in Afghanistan in what became the longest continuing conflict in U.S. history. The global war on terror in Afghanistan is called Operation Great Sin. In August of 2021, the final U.S. troops were pulled out of Afghanistan. If there are any Afghanistan veterans in the audience, please stand to be recognized.
they have as given their last full measure of devotion. The National Cemetery is a row upon row of some white markers out of the only fraction of the price that has been paid. They paid their blood with their breath, with their very lives, the price of freedom. They gave their tomorrow for our today. Secretary of the Army, President Trump, and her son were killed in the performance of his pain and his service to the
to our fellow students, we are free because of other people's sacrifice. We know that, and we don't want our thanks to be left unheard. We don't want our respect to be left unseen. We want to live lives that demonstrate our thanks and our respect. In the words of President John F. Kennedy, as we express our gratitude, we must never forget that the highest appreciation is not to utter words, but to live by them. Veterans Day is not just about words, it's about actions and a commitment to supporting our veterans long after they've hung up their uniform. Our veterans have dedicated their lives to preserving the freedoms we hold dear. They have stood up for liberty, democracy, and great justice, often in the face of great adversity. Whether they served in times of peace or in the midst of conflict, they have demonstrated remarkable courage and resilience. In the World War II film, Saving Private Ryan, which is based on the sole survivor policy of the U.S. War Department, Captain Miller leads a team of Army Rangers to find Private Ryan and bring him home because all of his brothers had been killed. In the final scene, Captain Miller is dying and whispers to Private Ryan to earn this. Truly, Private Ryan did not need to earn anything. He had already parachuted into German-occupied France, had fought bravely, and had lost all of his brothers. Yet he made sure to live the rest of his life in such a way that he was worthy of the sacrifice that had been made for him. The lesson for us is this. The best way we can honor our veterans is to honor them. How do we do that? We must live in a way that is worthy of their sacrifice, the physical and mental demands, their time away from their families, their health, and even their lives. We have heard stories of some of our own local veterans, and many more here are here with us today. They are our family members and our friends. We must live so that all they gave
thank you for being here with us this afternoon. To our veterans, thank you for your service and your sacrifice. Thomas Jefferson said, the price of freedom, freedom is eternal vigilance. Today, we honor all of, all of those who have worn the uniforms of service. From the worldwide conflicts of World War I and World War II, in the jungles of Korea or Vietnam, the tents stand off of the Cold War and multiple, or multiple tours in Iraq and Afghanistan, or a range of peacekeeping, peacekeeping missions. We owe a debt of gratitude to all who have paid the price. It is our sincere desire that today and every day you feel our appreciation and respect. We invite our guests to jo join us in the cafeteria for a reception. Thank you, and God bless you, and God bless the world.